Hey everybody, Brian here. In this video, I want to show you this car here. This is a Hyundai and it is what's called Ionic 6. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest looking cars that's been launched in a while. And if you can stick with me throughout the video, what I want to do is show you some of the really, really cool things that are on the outside of the car and the inside of the car and we'll go for a drive in the car as well. Yeah, just one thing, if you're in Ireland and you want some information on this car, Brian is my name, 086 843 1945. Call, text, WhatsApp, and I'll be happy to run through information on the car. Uh, or if you want to know about trading a car or, you know, anything that's relevant to buying one of these cars. If you're not from Ireland and you're watching on something like YouTube, if I miss something that you want to know information about, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer the question for you. So I think what we'll do is just run through some of the things that I see on the outside of the car and then we'll get to the inside and we'll go for a drive towards the end of the video then. One thing that sticks out to me on this car is it's a car. So what I mean by that is long range battery with unbelievable aerodynamics, which has resulted in quite a long range. And it's the first, not the first time, but I'm starting to really look at these electric cars now. In a way that somebody could come in and just buy it as a car. So before people were coming in to buy an electric car, but once you get into a car and you see a 600 kilometer range, it really inspires confidence to a point where now you're kind of going, okay, this is just a car because it totally destroys the whole range anxiety thing. So in terms of the shape on the car, it's absolutely one of those shapes that's completely unique and whether you like it or don't like it, you drive down the road in a car like this, people are going to look because it's just like absolutely nothing else on the road at the moment. And that's not easily done these days because so many cars have generic shapes. You look at all the SUVs on the road and you know, at a glance, a lot of them look very similar. This is like nothing else out there. So if you want something that's different and you want to stand out, this is definitely worth considering. And actually that is a point so and actually that is a point so there's so many cars on the road at the moment like the massive revolution over the last 10 years of people buying something like suv and stuff like that and the diminishing market of the saloon car it is so nice to have a saloon car back on the market but here's the thing the size of this car i think is super important to realize so many people when they come in to look for a car and they want space they look at something like we'll say tucson or santa fe so the only thing I would say on a big car, like Santa Fe, they're a big square shape. So ergonomically on the inside, yes, this is technically a squarer shape. The Santa Fe is actually about 19 centimeters higher than the Ionic 6. But in terms of the width of these cars, there is 10 millimeters. That's one centimeter. Basically, they're actually the same width. And what's quite impressive when you actually put the two of them side by side, Ionic 6 is actually seven centimeters longer than Santa Fe. And that's gonna have a big impact when you have tall passengers that need legroom in the back of the car. If you were to compare that also to Ionic 5, because I'm sure people are gonna compare or consider both these cars. Ionic 5, to be fair, is about 11 centimeters higher in the roof line than Ionic 6, but because both of them are on the same EGMP platform, there's only about 10 millimeters between the two of them in terms of width. So you'd pretty much say they're almost identical in terms of width. But again, when you line the two of them up side by side, Ionic 6 is actually 22 centimeters longer. And again, that's going to contribute to legroom for the interior passengers on the rear. Actually, just one interesting point to note, I've noticed, uh, well, actually I haven't noticed it was part of the launch pack. Um, this is the Hyundai badge that has been around for a while. So if you see, it has these kind of indentations and grooves and contours, whereas Ionic 6 features a remastered badge, which is actually much flatter than the older one. Anyway, it's only a bit of trivia. So the outside shape of the car, so it's been kind of, I suppose, marketed as this electrified streamliner. Um, if you're not familiar with like streamlined cars, if you look back at cars from like the 1920s and the 1930s, um, so you see some of the shapes that they had were really, really unbelievably cool and awesome, but they were obviously trying to, you know, develop aerodynamics and things like that. So in the pursuit of probably developing cars that were like really, really um, uh, excellent when it came to uh, aerodynamic shape, they also made shapes that were really cool looking and I think that's exactly what this is again. Part of the design shape actually has a lot to do with the wing from, so this kind of elliptical shape, which is from the uh, wing of a Supermarine Spitfire, which would be in a World War II fighter. You see, the whole thing with shapes is um, you're trying to increase aerodynamics um, to reduce drag. And the likes of this car here, batteries are really heavy. This car weighs two tons. Um, so nearly two tons, so that's quite a heavy vehicle. So to try and compensate, you can have a big battery, but you also have a lot of weight because of the big battery. So the best way to move around that and increase range is reduce drag. Um, so that is why development of uh, aerodynamics on a car uh, is super important. And this is one of the first ones I've seen design-wise where they've really concentrated on that. Which would probably help explain why, say, something like the wing of a fighter would actually be something relevant. 
like the whole thing about is how air meets the front of the car and then moves over and around the car. You want the car to take the natural easiest uh, path through the air. And then obviously less resistance means less drag, which means increased range. A lot of designers talk about what's called a drag coefficient. So the drag coefficient is basically explaining how easily air flows over a car. So in this one, it has a measurement of 0.21. So to, I suppose, give you a comparison, that would be one of the lowest ones available on the market right now. Uh, so a couple of trick features on the front of this car to do with aerodynamics. Along here is an active air flap. So it's currently open at the moment. Uh, the car's been running for a little while while I've been videoing. So um, that means if you were driving, it would allow air to get into this radiator back here and that'll help with cooling up the battery. But eventually when the correct thresholds are met, it actually completely closes up. Now that is fine. So obviously you have a nice flat surface, but what happens then is it's designed to channel air off to the left or to the right. So the air moves along here and then it's deflected guided. into this air curtain along through here. So the air has hit, met the front of the car, deflected in this case onto this side of the car, down through the air curtain, and then basically out through this gap here. So the consequence basically is the air is actually leaving the front of the car in a really unimpeded, natural sort of fashion. A pretty neat thing on the front of the car is it has these um, wheel arch gap reducers. So uh, you see here the gap well, actually, to be fair, all around it is anyway, but uh, in particular along here, uh, there's a reduced gap between the wheel and the front bumper. The consequence of that is that you don't get air traveling here getting into the wheel arch. One thing about these cars is the front end has quite a short overhang. So from there to there compared to some other cars, so like say, for example, something like this i30 or this Tucson over here, even that Toyota Corolla, the gap from the wheel to the front is actually quite long on many standard cars, but on this one, it's not, it's quite short. So the issue you can sometimes have with something like that is the front end of the car is not breaking the wind as early. Um, so having something like that wheel gap reducer is actually the same as having a longer bumper breaking the air further out front. It has a similar effect in the wind tunnel. The other byproduct of having those uh, wheel gap reducers also as well is it actually helps aid how effective these aero wheels are. So the wheels um, are in Ireland at the moment are all an 18 inch wheel. Um, so there's a couple of models called Signature and there's also a model uh, which is this one called Elegance. Um, and regardless of whether it's a 53 kilowatt hour battery or 77, they all have those 18 inch wheels. It looks like there will be an all wheel drive at some point finesse model, so that might have a 20 inch wheel. But anyway, for the moment, like we're saying, these are an aero wheel, so they're not designed like this just for fun. This is actually a super aerodynamic shape. Again, trying to stop air get trapped in here, trying to stop air getting trapped in there, and the same further down on the rear as well. Like what we said then, there's a really elliptical design on the shape of the car, but especially this spoiler on the rear. So a couple of things on this, like when they're designing things like this, this um, design process, in particular, super high powered computers. So the data of how they design stuff gets fed into a super high powered computer and they use all that information and feedback to come up with the most optimal shape on the rear. So the spoiler is there for a reason that again, it's the most aerodynamic way to get air to leave the car, but even the vortices on the side along here, the angles that they're at, again, designed in tandem with the whole shape of the car. So air comes off this in the most efficient manner that's possible. Even down through here, there's a small little kind of style duckbill spoiler, again, aiding that transition of how the air is going to leave the back of the car. It's the same with the diffuser down below. So, which again is designed in the most optimal fashion. And again, the grooves that you see on the diffuser, they're there basically, and they've been calculated to aid air leave the car in the most aerodynamic way possible. Even things like the separation trap over here. So again, small little grooves and that's just trying to get air to get off the rear of the car in a super efficient manner. It's also the same underneath. So if you look underneath the car, it's really, really flat. And again, air is completely unimpeded as it travels below the vehicle. One other feature that's worth mentioning as well, not unique to Ionic 6, we did see it on the 5 as well, but it does help with aerodynamics, is the auto flush door handles. So when they're open, so sometimes I remember when these came out, I was kind of thinking, yeah, okay. Is that the way I'd normally grab a door handle? But to be fair, there is a method in the madness. So when you look at it and it, you know, you actually get used to this kind of stuff after a while, but when they close, super flat. Which actually brings me onto the key. So the key is a peculiar shape. It has the Hyundai badge along through here. Um, so there's a couple of things. Uh, you've got lock, which is locking the car. You've got unlock and you've got an auto start function over here. 
So let's say the car is locked for the moment and it's turned off and you've left the car, that's absolutely fine. So if I hold this down along here, one, two, three, you can see the car has now actually started up. And then when I flip this over, that means now I can actually use that to move the car backwards and forwards. So by holding that button, I can auto move the car. So the car is now moving backwards from the key, which is really damn cool and helpful for parking. I let go and it stops. Or similarly, if I want to go forward, keep my finger on it and it starts moving forward. So again, and then let go to stop. Uh, if I want to finish that whole thing, then I can just turn off the car by using the auto hold. Handbrake comes on, car's turned off. The other thing on the key then is for the boot. So there is a power boot. So if I just hold that, power boot opens. I presume to close down, it's the exact same thing. So hold that again, one, two, but this time hold it all the way down. When you're letting up, you just need to hold it for about two seconds. When you're closing, you need to hold it for the whole sequence. In terms of getting in out of the car, uh, I could leave this key in my pocket. And what I would do along here is just touch that and it opens up. And then when I finish my journey or I'm getting out of the car, I can just touch that and it locks as well. Another way to open the boot then, so this here is your reverse camera. And this one here then is a button if you want to open up the boot. Um, so the boot, uh, right, okay, sorry, these cables are just quite untidy. The boot, a couple of things there actually. These here, you can pull them. That actually allows, because sometimes on saloon cars that is a bit of an issue, that will allow you to bring the seats and drop them forward. But there is one thing, okay, so the boot, um, I think the boot's quite good. You'd get golf clubs in it, you get a lot of uh, passenger luggage in it, but compared to an Ionic 5, because I know lots of people are going to ask, okay, so Ionic 5, 527 litres, uh, Ionic 6, 401 litres. So there is a bit of a difference. If a large boot, and just because the way this hatchback aperture is, it is larger, if it's super important to you, then this one might make a little bit more sense. But there's always going to be a trade-off between a super stylish car and the amount of space it's going to have along here, but it's definitely sufficient. In terms of lighting then, this car has 700 parametric pixels all the way around the car. The headlights have an intelligent lighting system. So everything's LED, as you can see along through here. Tons of little LEDs for the daytime running lights, and then you have these dual LEDs, but essentially, and what is useful on this intelligent lighting system is when there's maybe car in front of you on the road what it'll do is it'll try and disperse the light around the car so say for example you're driving along and uh, there's a car that comes up beside you and then it kind of gets to go in front of you it'll try and disperse light either side of the car so it's trying to give you maximum lighting but also reduce the dazzle for that other driver as well just for anyone that's wondering what the leds look like on the indicators that's them along here this is really neat along here so see the way it's kind of a smooth with little LEDs along through here. So sometimes you have just one bulb, but they're all individual ones there. And then for the rear indicators, again, LEDs along through there. In terms of the lighting in the rear then, unfortunately my camera resolution doesn't pick it up very well, but essentially we have a big long light bar that goes all the way across there. Just whatever way the resolution is on the other uh, setting on the phone, it won't pick it up as well, but that is a consistent line. I know it's hard to see. And then it's got this absolutely massive brake light along through here and also a second row along through there for a brake light that is also the fog lights down there which again are little parametric pixels and the reverse lights also have a same kind of parametric, uh, parametric pixel setup also okay so in terms of the rear of the car sitting behind myself at six foot it strikes me as quite decent when it comes to legroom um so I think it's got more legroom than say a Tesla Model 3 or Polestar 2. Um, I am struck actually by, I can't believe how much legroom is in this car. This is actually the first time I've sat in the back of this car. The headrests are tiny actually, but they're nice and neat looking. So, okay, what I have, armrest obviously down through here. I am actually really impressed at the amount of room in the back of this car. So this is the amount of legroom I have. So I'm six foot, so even someone that's six foot five or something like that, would have a lot of legroom. Compared to something like Ionic 5, the floor, the seat will feel uh, lower to the floor, or the floor will feel higher up compared to the seat, whatever way you want to think about it. Um, but having said that, I could stretch back. The legroom is awesome. Um, the roof is going to scrub down and it is a natural consequence of having such a cool shaped car. Uh, that'll come down a little bit closer to my head along through here. While I'm sitting in the rear of the car then, I've got some nice ambient lighting. Over here I've got heated seats, 
Uh, I've got a electric window control. I have this grab handle down through here. Uh, well, actually you can use that section for grab handle. That's more like a bit of storage for a phone. Uh, I've got more uh, lit up ambient lighting down through here for some storage. Down through here, then I've got two USBs and I've also got a, a heater control. And then, uh, which is kind of handy, I can move the front seat. You know, the driver loves to get used out of that, but the passenger could also control what way the seat is in front of them. Obviously, you can ask the driver because the driver's always going to be in the car when you're driving. The materials then, that is a nice leather sort of finish along here. It's a nice <laughs> contoured plastic sort of surface. And then along through here, speakers. And these are quite thin, so there's a lot of recycled materials used on the car. The leather inside the car then is an eco-processed leather, and some of the other plastic surfaces are made from recycled plastic bottles. The carpets then are also going to be constructed from recycled fishnets. One thing you may or may not notice at the start though, the door in along here, it's a lot thinner uh, than normal. Uh, so again, nice finish along here. It is a Bose stereo system, so we'll get to more of that uh, later on. But um, what one way that it has become thinner is because there's no controls. So when you sit into the car, you have a lot more space here because normally that's where your electric windows are and all that kind of stuff. So they've been put into the center. So because of that then you get this kind of almost cocooned dome shaped feel where it feels like the car is kind of surrounding you. But uh, like we're saying to you, this is very useful having that extra space over there. And it's just something I naturally really would never have thought of being as an issue. I have had it before. I remember Honda Civics that kind of have a little area that came along here and your knee would knock off it when you're getting out. But actually, now that I think about it, that feels unusually wide over there. So that is kind of cool. Just one other thing, actually, before I forget about it, in terms of um, eco materials used, the paint on the car is derived from bamboo charcoal pigment paint. And the cladding that you'll see <coughs> along the side of the car that's actually recycled pigment paint, which comes from end of life tires. Another kind of unusual feature actually, Liam, that's up in our Hyundai HQ uh, office. He showed me this. The aerial is actually transparent. Not the major, no major significance from it. I just thought it was kind of unusual, that's all. Like the Ionic 5 then, there is a frunk. So we have some storage in the front of the car. So open that up. Uh, obviously that has its own uh, struts that hold themselves up. And then after that, that's just for the 12 volt battery, that cover will sit in along through there. So that's a useful piece of storage, again, to substitute what's in the boot uh, that we already saw. Okay, so front seating. So this is going to bring the seat forward. This is going to bring the seat back. This is going to recline or unrecline the seat. And then this is going to be for lumbar support. And then you have the relaxation function. So we have this button here. So what I do is I press that backwards once. On the dash, it says, please make sure there's enough space behind the seat. And then I press it again. Well, actually, you're meant to do it within five seconds. So press it once, hold it. You get the message up there. Press the second time, and then it'll go into the relaxation function. Both seats in the front will have this. And that means you end up with a very, very comfortable place to sit. And then same thing, forward. And it'll put the seat back up into an upright position. The seats will also have memory functions. So if you have different people driving the car, then you can have Number one and number two, depending on who's driving the car. Sitting in the cabin then, this is what I'm going to see. So we talked about this already over through here. There's another Bose tweeter up through there. There's also speakers in the back of the car. This is kind of unusual the way that's shaped up through there. You got the two 12.3 inch, 12.3 inch screens. Uh, again, same kind of fin along through there. And then even things like when you start the car, maybe I'll show you inside. You see the light kind of show that's uh, emanating along through there. So we talked about this already. This has some storage with USBs. Storage in here for phones and things. Oh, sorry, this is what we talked about already. Central locking, um, auto hold, child locks for the rear windows, electrics all in through there, again, to make more space along the doors. Some storage in through here, a wireless charging pad up through there. USB again in through here, which will be crucial for things like your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and stuff like that. The gear shifter is very like Ionic 5. Well, it's actually the exact same. Forward, back, park. And then other common controls, things like a handbrake is in through there. These are electric mirrors and the folding functions and stuff like that as well. And then just controls for the charging cable, uh, whether you want to lock it or not. And also uh, opening the boot lid. And actually there's a big tunnel with more storage down through there. And I see a 12 volt output. The pedals on this model then are an aluminium pedal. And the start stop button is located over through here. This here is uh, controls for front demister, rear demister, speeding up or slowing down the fan. 
Uh, one thing, so if I press the climate, it brings up the climate function here. One thing I do see, this used to be called the warmer. Uh, I think they've sensibly changed it to being the steering wheel because like, that's essentially it was. Controls for the heated steering wheel and heated seat. Now they just have the functionality. Uh, this particular spec then is going to have cool seats as well as heated seats and also then heated steering wheel, passenger seat, driver seat. Some other controls then, these are the wipers which are obviously automated so they come on when it rains and they're very, very similar, if not identical to what I've seen in Ionic 5. And you know, and it's a nice tactile feel, that silver uh, brushed aluminium. There's automatic lights, obviously they come on at night. We talked about the intelligent lighting system. You know, they dip when they meet traffic and that kind of stuff. Over through here, you can see then we have a heads up display. So that gives lots of different information uh, while we're driving. So that's quite cool. And one other thing I really, really like, uh, I saw it on the Kia and I didn't see it on the Ionic 5 and I was disappointed, was this here. So I'm a bit of an idiot and I really like old cars when they made sounds and things like that. And there's one thing I didn't like about electric cars uh, was they weren't making any noises when you're driving. So it reduces driving pleasure, but now they've got an active sound setup. So if you have it off, you know, there's no internal noise, but you have this augmented sound inside the car. So when you're driving, that's the maximum setting. If I go into drive. So the noise seems to be contingent on throttle position. So if you floor the car, you get like a louder sound. I think it's awesome. I love it. So it just kind of brings back some of the old school stuff that you used to get from a conventional car. So, so again, same idea. We'll just blip the throttle halfway through. We'll come off the throttle and back on. So floor it. Off and on. That's cool. And the car just has thousands of settings. So like you go into the heads up display and you can start to manipulate, you know, position and the content that's in it. It is just really, really, really nice. And it's useful actually. And all these things are designed to do is keep your eyes that way. So you stay looking at what's happening in front of you instead of looking down through here. Okay, let's have a quick chat about basic charging and things like that. The camera, by the way, is the big 360 camera that we would have seen on Ionic 5 as well. So you can have different setups and positions. Um, this one's quite cool. Actually, a customer showed me on the Ionic uh, 5. I didn't realize you could actually scroll it around. So like, we'll just leave it here. We'll back up to the charge point. Maybe at a bit of an angle over this way. To be fair, there is probably more useful settings, but this one is definitely the most visually appealing version. So uh, I think it's really, really awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, so the car has a 77 kilowatt hour battery of which 74 are usable. So for a lot of people, this information is going to be really redundant because they already know about it. But I have to make the assumption there's somebody going to be watching this and this might be their first endeavor into electric cars. This is for your fast charging, okay? This is for your home charging. Um, so the car will come with initially a granny cable is what we call it in Ireland. Maybe it's called other, other parts of the world. So in through there, this will plug into the car, but this has also got a three pin socket. Granny is not something I would rely on. The granny is going to push maximum around 10 amps, which is going to be about 1.8 to maybe two kilowatts every hour. Considering this is a 77 kilowatt hour battery, if it was getting two kilowatts every hour, that is quite slow. That's like 30 something hours for a full charge. You wouldn't do it, but it's just if you have some sort of emergency. Most people will have like a charge point in their house. So that means then that you are using the thicker cable that comes with the car, which can allow you to charge from a house. So a single phase house can charge up to about seven kilowatts every hour. Seven into 77, that would be 11 hours for a full charge. This cable will also work on other AC chargers, which can be maybe a three phase one, which would be like an industrial site, and they can charge up to 11 kilowatts. So this here is a seven kilowatt hour charger. That's like what you get in a normal residential house. But we also have ones in the back that are 11 kilowatts. So 11 into 77 now brings your charging time from 11 hours down to seven hours. And for most people then, that's pretty much what they're going to do in terms of their charging. However, there's people who are going to use the public network. To be fair, I think people that use the public network, they're not going to look for like a zero to a hundred charge. But the big thing on a car like this is from like say 10% up to 80%, which will allow, because this car has a 614 kilometer range quoted, my gut feeling, and I don't know yet, uh, is that most customers are going to buy a car like this, expect high 400s to early 500s. I think that's realistic, but in the summer you might do better, and the winter a little bit worse. I think if you were promising people late 400s, early 500s, it's super realistic, I think, on a car like this. Uh, but there is definitely going to be people that will excel and get into the high 500s, and there might be even people that can dominate into the early 600s. But anyway, say if you were using the fast charging network, you would go to, say, a 50 kilowatt hour charger. Um, 
about 60, a little over an hour, 66 minutes, you can go from 10% up to 80% or in a super fast charger, 350 kilowatt hour, um, which they're a little bit harder to find to be fair. Um, you can go from 10% again, up to 80% again, within about 18 minutes. Just sorry, I'm jumping backwards and forwards a little bit here, but one thing I forgot as well is it's interesting when you use the navigation on the car, uh, it's also displayed in that heads up display too. So I thought that was pretty neat. Then a kind of very cool little feature. So you have this kind of interactive steering wheel setup. So these four parametric pixels. So say for example, when I start the car, you get some nice lighting along through here. And then even things like when you change the drive mode, they change the look, they change color. So depending on which mode you're in, I think that's very, very neat. The 12.3-inch um, screen over here, very like Ionic 5 as well. So we got some um, trip meter information that's uh, changing up through here. So if we, they've changed the steering wheel controls actually. So compared to uh, Ionic, and I, sorry, I know I keep comparing to Ionic, but it is a kind of barometer, I suppose, for this car for me, because I'm used to the five. Um, changing trip information up through there with uh, various different consumption info and all that kind of stuff. Adaptive cruising through there. This roller is quite nice to use. And then this is, sticks out a little bit further, I think, than the older one. So that's quite nice to use. Bluetooth over through here then, and then audio controls in through here as well. So that's slightly different than before. This screen here um, looks like Ionic 5, but a little bit different in some ways. Um, and then in terms of, so again, this, this needs its own video. So this is just to show you map, navigation, phone, phone projection for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, things like voice memos, the warmer ventilation we saw already for seat heaters and things like that. The big one on thing on this gonna, uh, car is going to be settings, and then you can change all the settings in through here. Um, the vehicle settings are going to have some nice information like uh, driver assistance features. The drive mode, so you can customize uh, the drive mode. So you can have your own drive mode where you can um, basically have their power output to max, standard, minimized. How, I suppose, throttle position, uh, throttle sensitivity, I'm going to put it into high on that one on, on my version. And then the steering, do you want a normal steering or do you want a sport steering wheel setup? So uh, that's nice because some people will have their own way of wanting to drive. Similarly with the brakes then, um, you can have a sporty uh, regenerative uh, brake feel or you can just have a normal one that's going to be a little bit more efficient. I think that's important stuff uh, because one thing I found with electric cars, you were losing, I really like cars. I love the way the older ones used to sound. I used to like driving cars fast. It was important to me. And the electric cars, uh, at the some of the first ones that came out, they were grand. The acceleration was fun, but it's sort of lost because you're not getting that tactile, not tactile, but some of the tactile feel, but this kind of visceral sort of feel where it makes you excited because all this... Uh, sometimes you could drive a slow car, but if it sounds awesome, it actually makes up for it. So being able to have different ways of manipulating how the car uh, performs and having noises that go with that as well, it actually is starting to bring in a lot of driving pleasure again. Uh, just while it's in my head, some people are going to ask, because this model has the ability to uh, have a trailer package. That's not standard on all the models. So you've got to go for the Elegance model. But see, uh, some people are going to want to tow caravans and are going to want to know what the towing capacity is. So um, the gross train weight, which is 3910, that's the maximum that the car and its towing um, uh, item can actually weigh. 2410 is the maximum that the car can weigh. So the difference between those two things is how much the trailer can weigh. 1500, so 1 1.5 tons. Another thing that people are going to customize quite a bit, so we'll say you have the lighting that's inside the car. All this kind of long here, but one thing is there is some lighting, um, which is a dual sort of setup. So into settings, into vehicle, into lights, into ambient lighting. So we have the brightness and we have the color. That's fine. So different colors along through there. Um, you can link to the drive mode, you can have it dimmed in the dark, sync light with speed, which basically means under 30 kilometers an hour, you're only getting about 10% of the lighting. And then when you get up to 100 kilometers an hour, you're getting about 100% of the lighting. So it's really, again, it's that feel that stuff is going on when you're driving the car. You're actually getting some feedback from the car visually and auditorially and all those kind of things add to the driving pleasure of the car. It's also got some two-tone options as well. So very, very nice. So where you'd normally go into the menu, if you're not familiar with it, you have the single color, which is fine. And then you can go in and actually set a custom color or you can scroll all the way down here. And that's where you get green here, yellow there. So driving the car, like all electric cars, it's really nice and quite dry. I love this big screen on the left. That was on Ionic 5, but it's even bigger on Ionic 6. So it's this large, like not a lot of people use it, but I think it's really cool. I love the blind view monitor. So you see here when I turn left or turn right, 
you'll see this little window that comes up here to show on the left hand side or the right hand side just a little camera i think that's really really awesome but i really love that screen in terms of acceleration so this one i'm driving is rear wheel drive 77.4 um kilowatt hours so this car makes about 225 horsepower and that means it gets from zero up to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.4 seconds There is other battery choices obviously as well so you have the 53 kilowatt hour which would be um the smaller battery seems to have about 150 horsepower and you're going from zero to about 60 miles an hour uh, or 100 kilometers an hour in about 8.8 .8 seconds uh, you know so that's about 1.5 seconds slower than this one um i love this here which is part of the highway drive assist too so it's telling you basically what's around you it's a surrounding vehicle information display so you can see it along here which is really useful when you have that uh, cruise control and lane keep assist turned on but it's also displayed up in the heads uh, heads up display as well so it's really really useful information like what we said then there is a couple of other battery choices so you got the all-wheel drive 77.4 kilowatts apparently makes about 320 horsepower and it goes from 0 to 100 in about 5.1 seconds so that must be a really awesome car to drive like what we said i'm driving the rear wheel drive 77.4 kilowatt hours so on paper 614 kilometers i think i'm going to be telling people maybe late 400 early 500 kilometers is a realistic range but you can do better if you want and then if anyone's curious about the 53 kilowatt hour rate it again for 430 kilometers i think i'm going to be telling people probably mid 300s uh, is very very realistic on that size of battery driving this car compared to ionic 5 and i know sorry i keep comparing it on, uh, to ionic 5 uh, but I think it's a useful metric to compare to. Uh, this car definitely feels lower, um, but a little bit more driver orientated. So you have the drive modes that you saw there. So in terms of power for overtaking, For some reason, it, like I mean, it's similar weight to Ionic 5, but it feels faster. Um, and it does definitely, the center of gravity is lower uh, than Ionic 5 because the car is lower overall. So on a back road like this, it does feel a little bit more sporty than the Ionic 5, for sure. And it's a car that on a back road like this, you know, in keeping within the speed limits, but uh, I have found electric cars to be, because, you know, they weigh a lot more, they can be a little bit soft over bumps and it's nice and comfortable but on the back road you don't want something as soft you want something a little bit harder uh, to get more feedback and you know feel where the car is and what it's doing um, but I was quite confident driving the car on the road again within speed limits but you know they are twite, uh, at twisty roads um, but it was confidence inspiring and you just can't get over that awesome power and I really love the sound that's coming in through all those things are increasing the driving pleasure so I'm really starting to enjoy driving electric cars like I used to you know enjoy driving maybe older internal combustion engine cars that were in my opinion that were very exciting we're starting to see some glimmers of hope of how driving can still be interesting in terms of electricity consumption it's definitely lower than ionic 5 and kona what i've seen in those so i didn't drive the car that easy this evening but it was staying in around kind of 14 uh, kilowatts per 100 kilometers uh, so that is definitely lower than the ones i've seen so far so the model that you've been looking at basically is an Elegance. Um, there is a signature model as well. This is the Elegance with the 77 kilowatt hour battery that we talked about. Couple of things, I just wanna make sure if you are interested in specification and if you're still watching, I appreciate it. If you want the following things, you have to go for the Elegance. Trailer package, leather interior, auto flush door handles, remote smart parking assist, Bose speaker system, LED projection and adaptive driving beams, ambient mood lighting, surround view monitor, blind spot collision avoidance forward collision avoidance 2 highway drive assist 2 memory seat premium relaxation seats blind spot view monitor park collision avoidance privacy glass on the rear heated rear seats ventilation seats up front heads up display electrochromatic rear mirror and the side body belt line and high gloss so all of those things you have to go for this elegance model if that's what you want so anyway there you have it well it's not all of it it's by no means comprehensive but i've tried to cover as much stuff that I think would be useful for people. Um, however, if I've left something out and you're on YouTube, just comment below and ask me and I'll do my best to answer the question. Or if you're in Ireland and you're considering buying one of these cars, 086-843-1945, give me a shout, call, text, WhatsApp. I'll be happy to answer information uh, that I might have missed. Anyway, if you've managed to watch till the end, I really, really appreciate it because I know it can be quite a long time to listen to one person. Anyway, thanks so much for watching.